What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, world? It's your boy, Vicky Excel. This is the Riding Dirty Show, where we bridge the gap between hip-hop and everyday life, man. I got to start the show by saying one time for the good people over at WRFG 89.3 FM Atlanta, our FM radio home for the past 15-plus years, definitely holding down the 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Thursday night, Friday morning, overnight slot. I also got to say one time for the good people over at Live. 365.com. Now, for those who don't know, Live365.com, they are the Internet's oldest and longest-running streaming service. But they're not your traditional streaming service. No, they are not. What they are is they are a platform that allows uh, small, widest radio stations, AM radio stations, some of your smallest stations to have the capabilities to broadcast via the Internet. Okay? Now, what they do is they provide a server. And you can broadcast your platform there. But not only do they provide a server, but also on their server, they are media based. They rec they are media based, which means that if the artist's music is registered to ASCAP, CSAC, or BMI, then you will receive royalties for your play as they accumulate when it comes to terrestrial radio. All right, so artists. If you're played on any of the stations on Live365.com and your music is pro properly registered, then that will go towards your radio play royalties, all right? So make sure your business is handled. Well, we partnered up. We had the opportunity to partner up with Live365, all right? We partnered up with Live365, and we launched our very own internet radio station, all right? The name of our station is Ride95, okay? Ride95. We're the home of what's next in hip-hop and R&B and country rap tunes, okay? Now, the way to access our station is very, very easy. All you got to do is go to Live365.com. Once you go to Live365.com, then go to the search engine. Once you're in the search engine, type in RIDE, or I D E the number 9, the number 5, RIDE, the number... Nine to number five, click on our station logo, and you'll have music 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. All right, now if you want to access via your mobile device, it's also just as easy. All you got to do is download the Live 365 app. Once you download the app, go to the search engine, type in ride, type in 95, click on the station logo. And again, music, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. One time for the good people over at Live365 for allowing people the opportunity to broadcast via the Internet. Also, one time for the good people at WRFG, 89.3 FM Atlanta, Georgia, your station for progressive and hand-picked music. All right? All right? We're always keeping it progressive, and we're always keeping it moving. All right. It's time for me to do what I like doing most. I let you know about our radio homes. Also, make sure you check us out on all your favorite streaming services. Check us out. Go to any of your favorite streaming services. Type in Riding Dirty Radio, and we'll pop up. Be sure to keep up with us on social media, and that's TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, at Riding Dirty Radio. And also, check us out on Riding Dirty TV on YouTube. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for me to do what I enjoy doing most, and that's bring you the people that are definitely changing our culture, whether it's through arts, entertainment, philanthropism, business, entrepreneurship, religion. This platform is for those who are changing the culture. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tonight is no different than any other night on the Ride and Dirty Show. So welcome to the platform, Shells the Kid. What's going on, my G? Yes, sir. Not much, man. I'm just super blessed to be here, man. All right, all right. So, look, the first thing I want to say is thank you for coming on the show. I definitely appreciate your time for um, hanging out and talking with us. Yes, sir, man. Thanks for having me. 
All right, so look, let's 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 take a walk into the life of Shells the Kid. The first thing I want you to do is let all our listeners know where you're from. And I'm from North Carolina, man. Um, a small town named Ahaski. Um, yeah, it sounds weird, but um, but yeah, it's like uh, it's a very small town. Um, straight from North Carolina, man. I'm born and raised. Okay. All right. What was your introduction to music? Like, when did you realize that you had a talent to do music? Um, <laughs> probably like when I was like in junior high. Uh, yeah, like probably um, around the time where Lil Wayne really started. Like, it was a point where Lil Wayne was just really releasing a lot on remixes, on mixtapes and stuff. And, um, yeah, so that's that's around the time where I feel like, you know, like, like I'm trying to do this. All right. Now, knowing, seeing Lil Wayne do what he was doing and being from a small area, what provided you the confidence? Because seeing someone do it and being from a small area and realizing you can do it, something had to make you say, you know, jump off the porch and attempt. <laughs> Yeah, man, um, actually, uh, just, just, uh, just, uh, being myself, being me around, um, my family, my friends, um, school town shows and stuff like that, man, um, really, really gave me the confidence. But mostly, mostly it started from, like, just, uh, uh, performing and, um, being myself around my friends and family. All right. Do you remember your very first studio experience and what that was like? My very first studio um, performance. Uh, studio experience. Was, experience. Um, oh, studio experience. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, um, it was uh, with, um, I, I believe, like I was like in eighth or seventh grade, where, um, yeah, it was like a room for guys like, like that was already in high school. Um, and they played a beat, and it was like everybody right something to it. Um, not really sure if my verse made it on the actual song. I just knew it was just something that I was trying to do, and I and I love that. I love that experience. So yeah. All right. Who are some of your influences? I know you mentioned Lil Wayne, but who are some of the artists that inspire you to be the yeah. best possible? Um, honestly, uh, it's it's, it's quite it's, it's it's a few actually. Um, I know um. I like Tory Lanez a lot. Um, uh, I'm a I'm a big uh, Jay Z fan. Um, uh, just just recently started listening to not too long a couple of years ago. I just recently started listening to uh, Jonah Lucas. Um, super dope, um, creative as far as his uh, visuals and um and I and I like his cadences and his flows. Um, uh, who else? Uh, I can say um, I was a huge Dipset fan when I first started. You know the whole Jewel Santana camera. Um, uh, trying to see if I'm missing one. I think that's about it, though. All right, dope man. That's some great company. That's some great company to be in. All right, so you went to the studio. You're not sure yeah. if that verse actually made it to that song, but it definitely left a a long lasting impression in your mind. All right. At that point, um, of course you yeah. had to have being in the eighth grade, you had to have the backing of your family. What was your family like when you told them you wanted to pursue music? Um, I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, I don't think they knew that it was rap that I was trying to do. So, um, so my grandfather, he encouraged me to, um, join the high school marching band, the high school marching band. Once I got in high school, so, I did that. I was in the drum line uh, through my whole high school career just to learn more about the uh the composition of music, like you know what I'm saying? Like uh like like the, the building of the actual music. Like and then later on that's when everybody realized like, like oh no, like like he's an actual artist. Like he actually like uh making lyrics or making melodies, like you know what I'm saying? So yeah, so that's pretty much where where that came from. 
Okay, no doubt, no doubt. All right, so you started your basically professional, independent recording career. Let's talk about some of the releases that you've had. Um, your first project you introduced the world to was what? Um, the first official project that I introduced the world to was um my first mixtape was called Yours Truly. Um, then um. Uh, I'm not mistaken. Then, the, um, then I was working with a group by the name of So Much More. It was a multicultural group. Um, it was it was like an actual like band, like an alternative band. And I was the rapper in the band. Um, and I'm, when I say band, I'm talking about like guitar, drums, all of that. It was, it was like a, a live band. And then um, we we had an EP. Um, I want to say that released in like 2015. Then I came out. Then later in 2015, I released my first my first solo EP, which was called 2000 and Love. Um, and then um, I was just releasing singles and stuff like that up until 2019, where I released I Messed Up. That was my uh, debut album. And then um, last month, well, this month, February 12th, I just released 2000 and Love Part Two. So yeah, so. All right. Um, let's go back to the performing with the band. Like, what was that like, man? That had to be an amazing experience. Okay. Man, it was wild, man. I'm talking about, like, I, like, okay, so I like to think of, like, me being 40 pounds ago, right? So that, that's my joke. Like, like, I like to say I was 40. This was 40 pounds ago where, like, you were jumping into the crowds and stuff, crowd surfing and all that stuff. Like, it was super cool, man. Um, uh, and, and, and it was the first time where where uh, it was more than just I had to do more than just rap. Like I didn't know how to set up um, for stages and all that stuff like that. Um, so I, I learned a lot. Like you know what I'm saying. Like as far as uh, setting up like actual like a set list, um, uh, running the click track so that the loud band could play behind you. All of that stuff, man. It was it was so dope. Um, wearing in air monitors so you can hear yourself, you can hear the music. <sighs> it's it's nothing like it. I don't never want to do anything without a band ever again, like live. If I have to, like I don't never want to do it without a band ever. All right, now how did all those things you learned while performing with the band? How did that transcend into with you? Becoming a solo artist, especially when you take that stage. Oh man, um, it, it helped me to um, to actually uh, how can I put it? Like it helped me to be a I, I want to say be a better performer and actually to um, use the totality of everything. Like use all of your resources while you're on stage, like a microphone stand, um, just just everything, include the the, the crowd, the audience. Um, feedback, um, eye contact, like it just it just taught me so much. Like you know what I'm saying? Like 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 and, and, and it's something that um that I would cherish forever, for real. Alright. Um let's also let's talk a little bit about your spiritual background. Because you're a spiritual leader in your current um church, correct? I am. I am, I am. Let's talk a little bit oh, yeah, about that I'm and I'm a, um Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. Um I'm a uh I'm a worship leader at my church, um, uh, and um, that actually helps a lot as well. Like being able to have, um, like practice and um, being able to have the uh, the courage to be able to sing in front of an audience every week. You know, I mean, every week. I mean, every week, and it and it starts help to build some type of stage presence, you know, and um, and it starts to help you uh, learn how to control the crowd, uh, things like that. Um, um, I love it. Um, uh, you know, so, um, so, so yeah, so, uh, it's, 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 it's super dope, man. Like, like for anybody that, 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 that has started out like this and most artists, um, industry artists have all started out in the choir or whatever. So, um, so I'm pretty sure like, like anybody can say like that, that, that has started like that can say like it's, it's super dope. And that's basically where, People get their practice and their, and and when they first find out like hey like I can really do this 
But you know what I'm saying? So. No doubt. All right. The title, right. 2000 in Love 2. Tell me a little bit about the title. It's a very dope title for a project. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Um, the first, like I said, the first 2000 in Love uh, EP, it was a, it was just an EP. It was basically, um, uh, I want to say 2015. I had just proposed to my wife, um, and I felt like that was like the year of love. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we in the 2000, and it was 2015 initially, but in my mind it was 2000 in Love. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, like, like a year, man. Like, you see what I'm saying? So, so, um, so the 2000 in Love Part Two is is basically like the sequel, like everything that, like, like everything that's happened since me and my wife has got like has gotten married, the kids, the, the new house, it's just everything. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just everything. And in the midst of just all, everything that's been going on in 2020, I just wanted to bring back some real love type stuff, man, where people can appreciate each other, appreciate time. No doubt, no doubt. All right, now, what has been some of your struggles, if any, of being an independent artist, and what advice would you give to other independent artists? One of the struggles is um just really just trying to stay consistent, you know, really just trying to stay consistent um with 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 just releasing content, um trying to make sure that um that that you're growing organically uh by by using content and and and, and trying to stay consistent. But if I had to tell anybody that's trying to do this anything, I would tell them to be genuine, be and in some cases be overly genuine, like. Like what I said, uh, I, I was talking to, to my wife um, the other day, and I told her, like, it's a big world, you know. Um, you just want to be able to relate to somebody. And or, or and and you may never know, there might be a gang of people that see things just like you, you know, but you just have to continue to be open to genuine. Somebody's going to like it. You see what I'm saying? So that's pretty much how I feel. No doubt. How do you juggle being a father, a husband, and an artist? Man, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> nah, um, like as far as as far as being a dad and and a husband and and a recording artist, man, um, I just take it day by day. You know, um, I will say uh, when it's time to uh, when it's time to go on the road or whatever, which I haven't been on tour since like since like 2019. You know, and I'm not sure when the next time I'll go on tour again because um, of COVID or whatever. But um, but uh, but yeah, but just, just, just. I mean, it, it's it's you definitely trying to maintain a balance. But um, but but um, long long as the life good, man. <laughs> then 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 I believe everything 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 will balance out pretty well though. As long as the wife's good, and of course the, you can't leave the house unless the bills are paid. So, but um, as long as those two things are taken care of, then um, then, then I think we 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 can do it. Though. All right. Um, do you think you encourage your kids to get into music? Um, I wish. Um, honestly, I I I, I want to encourage my kids to do um whatever it is they want to do. Like like I know um. My oldest son, I, I really want him to play the play the piano, um, and really get into stuff like that, like 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 from my marching band experience and stuff like that. But um, but I don't want to lead him to it, like you see what I'm saying. Whatever he's passionate about, he's gonna do it. But but I'm hoping and praying that that uh he picks it up and and he loves it for what it is and and it just drives him to be the best that he want to be. All right, no doubt, no doubt. How do your congregation feel about your music? Oh man, um, they uh, they love it. I mean, like again, I'm just being myself. Um, I'm not saying anything that I wouldn't say in front of them. You know, how um, <laughs> about to say like you know, um, the Bible says uh, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and shall obtain favor from the Lord. And that's basically what I'm talking about most of the time. And, and this album is my, my, my relationship with my wife, you know, and, um, and I talk about my kids. So, um, so, so yeah, I mean, I ain't, I'm not having anything from my, my, uh, church family or anything. So, so, I mean, they love it for the most part though. No doubt. 
All right, so look, we got a record by you that we're going to drop. Um, I think it's called Believe Me, We Got This. Tell me a little bit about this record. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So basically, um, I wrote this I wrote this record um, when COVID had first hit, you know, um, and, like, jobs and stuff was falling out of every place and, 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 and everything was just dropping. The economy was dropping and stuff like this. And, and, and the only thing my wife really wanted to do was go out on a date, right? But everything was closed, so I had to kind of be creative and make some things happen at the house right here where we were, you know, and, and, and I just wanted to make a promise to her that even though we was on lockdown, like, like I was still going to be that, that romantic person, you know, um, that she married. Um, so, so yeah, that's pretty much where it came from. All right. Now, before the I, thought of the song, yeah. All right. Before I have you introduce the song, what I want you to do is let the people know mm -hmm. how to find you on the World Wide Web and how they can check your music out. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, cool. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram um, by the name of Shells the Kid. That's S H E L L Z D as in dog A K I D. Uh, Shells the Kid. Um, so yeah, so and um, that's Facebook and Instagram. Um, my my album, 2012, Two is on all streaming platforms. Uh, well, music music platforms. Um, it's on all of them, iTunes, Spotify, Tidal. How you listen to your music? Um, Amazon. How you listen to it is up there. Um, so, yeah, that's how fun. That's how fun, man. All right, introduce the record to the world. Yo, so this is Shells the Kid, and this is, believe me, we got this. Um, I'm not sure if this is the remix or not, but if it's the remix, then it's with my boy C-Dash and Damian Taylor. If it's not the remix, then it's just me, Shells the Kid. But either way, we're going to have a good time. Appreciate it, my G. Have a blessed night. You too, man. Thanks for everything. <laughs>